There are meteors drifting in space, chunks, rocks made of stone. When they enter Earth's atmosphere, they heat up from friction and turn into fire until they burn out. Some people call this a falling star. In 1886, Professor Louis Frank raised an interesting question that caused a storm in the scientific world. According to measurements from space, it is estimated that about 30,000 meteors enter Earth every day. On average, a meteor enters every three seconds. Professor Louis Frank asked, why don't we see them? After all, if we were sitting on a porch or walking in the desert, we should see the sky filled with meteors falling, with shooting stars. Louis Frank argued that many of these meteors are probably not made of rock-like thought, but large ice chunks. When a rock enters, it heats up, burns, and we see it as a glowing point of light. But when ice enters, what happens to it? It melts. That's why we don't see it. He made this suggestion, caused a big stir, and there was a lot of debate. Ten years later, after precise images from space, they saw that he was right. So great. In 1996, science discovered an amazing thing, that there is a supply of water from space. The great wonder is that when you open the Talmud, it says in a verse, and a river went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. Every child learns in school about the water cycle, how it starts from the oceans, forms into clouds, the clouds turn into rain, and it falls back down. The Talmud says, Rabbi Yehoshua says, here is the great surprise. The entire world is sustained by the upper waters and drinks from them. As it is written, the heavens will drink water. What are the upper waters? We see the distinction made by God between the waters above the firmament and the waters below the firmament. Rabbi Yehoshua says, the world receives a supply of water from space. If we had shown this to a NASA scientist in 1885, they would have laughed at us. The world gets its water supply from space? What are you talking about? But here, we are amazed by this ancient knowledge. But there's also a practical lesson for our everyday lives. The sages say, know that the water that comes from space is healthier for the body than the water of the earth. And why? Hatam Sofa says, when we speak, the words that come out of our mouth mix with the air, and these words mix with the clouds. We speak, there are words, and the air, we don't see what happens in the atmosphere, everything rises, everything mixes. If we speak good things, a person who gives a kind word to a friend, encouragement, support, prayer, words of Torah, positive things, these rise and mix in the air with the water vapor, and then the rain that falls is healthy for the body. But a person who speaks with a foul mouth, curses, says inappropriate words, thinks, I'm just joking, but he contaminates the world's air. Hatam Sofa says, a hundred rains that fall, where people pollute the air with their words. These waters are less healthy than the waters that come from space. In other words, it's in our hands to improve the quality of the waters of creation and upgrade them but it's also in our hands to ruin everything, to destroy it all. If a person wants to check for themselves the power of their words, they should conduct an experiment. To this day, all those who laughed at this experiment and did it have contacted me to apologize. The common feature of all researchers is that they took two plates. On one plate, they placed seeds on cotton wool and watered them with regular tap water. On the second plate, they placed seeds on cotton wool like children doing experiments, and they either prayed over them or recited psalms near them but didn't water them. The seeds watered with regular tap water began to grow and sprout to a certain height. The seeds exposed to the prayers or the sounds of psalms grew twice as high. One can see with their own eyes how words influence. The Chatan Sofa says, when we speak we affect the upper worlds, but not only in the spiritual supernatural dimension of creation, in our physical world, there is also a difference in the quality of water between these waters and those waters. Although when we bless, we don't bless for health, a great principle is written by Ramban. In every commandment, God arranged a benefit for man in this world as well. When a person speaks kindly, it may seem like, I just made my friend feel better. I saw them in the street and they were in a bad mood. I gave them a few words of encouragement, support, telling them how good and important they are. This may seem like it's between you and them, and no one in the world knows. 
after a person arrives in the world to come, they will be shown how much bounty and blessing they brought to the world, how they improved the quality of everything, even the plants watered by the rain that came from their words. He who makes Torah his delight, this is what is written. If not for my covenant day and night, I would not have set the laws of heaven and earth. Every person at home, when they have five free minutes, takes a book and learns Torah. Those five minutes, they are partners with many others who are learning at that time, fulfilling creation, and their reward is great and immense.